Welcome to the Cult of Cinema. And uh, first unboxing of 2020. I did not expect to be doing this tonight. And before I actually get into that, I got, I've got my tea. And like, I've got my tea here with my Ultimate Warrior mug. But uh, we're gonna get into more than that actually. Originally my tea was gonna be put in something else. So this is kind of cool. So I have some Blu-rays to unbox. Hey Alan. But if you were a really great guy, hey Amy, John sent me this. And the reason this does not have tea in it is because it's kind of hard to show this off without initially, hey Adrian, dumping, a, dumping stuff in myself. So he designed this actually. And I think it's bloody brilliant. Hey Danuch, welcome man. <laughs> hey cool. And uh, before I get into the other unboxing, I just actually opened this up. Uh, hey, Cool Blue. Uh, so this is a Cult of Cinema mug. Yeah, hey, Dave. Hey, EW, this is one of a kind. It was designed by a viewer here, John. And uh, I freaking love this. So uh, this was sent to me. And it's going to be like, kind of like one of my official Cult of Cinema mug. Uh, but it couldn't be on my first time in. <laughs> Why? Because if I went to show you guys this and it would, uh, and it had tea in it, this, hey, entertainment. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> UW, there we go with that, huh? But this is bl friggin' brilliant. Uh, if I ever merchandise down the road, I guess permission first, but this this could be something. Uh, but this is my first like uh, it's it's been. Uh, no, time away was good. Cinematech missed you guys a lot. Uh, did one video since I got back uh, last week. Last weekend after I did my video, I ended up getting really really sick. Hey, B movie. Um, and when I say really really sick, I don't mean like a little sick. I mean uh, remember when I said that my voice was going. It went, it went to the point where I <laughs> spent the uh, entirety of like Saturday and Sunday and Monday too. I had to take a day off work uh, in bed, taking extra strength, cold medication. Hey, Trini, uh, I'm stoked. The only thing I love this, I you get something and it's so cool and you almost don't, you want to put it up like, you know what I mean? I want to use it, like, but I still want to kind of put it up. That's my first call to cinema, like, I, I tried, I mean, I couldn't, I was in and out for like, uh, for like two or three days, <laughs> like completely in and out of it. And if I got to go over there for a second, I do, because I'm still a bit nose ready, I want to be there. So. If you remember last year, uh, in October, I was supposed to uh, be getting, well, and it was supposed to be a Christmas gift, the, uh, the last, the last latest of the hammer volumes. So it got lost in the mail. Amazon actually lost it. They contacted me uh, and they let me know that was lost. So uh, that was uh, that was it. That was the case, and it was a shame because it had the best films of like of the of all the series like so far. Uh, and I I don't mean that lightly. I'll actually explain that. So imagine my surprise when I got home today. I didn't check the mail. I just got home and started watching some videos with my better half. She wasn't feeling the best. So around half an hour ago, I went to the mail and I saw like a box there. I said, well, that's, that's an Amazon box. And I knew that I had a Doctor Who thing that I'd ordered before Christmas. Uh, well, when it, when it originally was announced, so way before Christmas. And I got pushed back uh, coming. Hey, Jason, welcome, man. Oh, I love Troy Horse books. Uh, that's a fantastic, I don't have that one yet. My dad has it. It's a fantastic book, though. It's 
So I opened it up expecting to find maybe the Doctor Who early. Like I don't usually get things early from like the UK. And uh, I haven't seen Underwater yet. I haven't actually. To my surprise, this was in my mailbox. I don't know if it's my favorite Don Dolder film, but it's actually a fun one. My favorite Don Dolder film is, made, is probably Fiend. So, I prepare for a sacrifice. Because it is time. To do my very first Never really thought about it, but I guess I do, because this was like, this easily fit in my mailbox. With room and spare. I'm going to be very careful with this. I don't want to cut this, I don't want to hurt the knife either. Because this is, after all, just a ceremonial dagger from the cult of cinema. There we go. Who hates horror films? What did I miss out on? Uh, Disney doesn't actually eat horror films. The mention is Disney, actually. And that's where uh, a lot of your Halloween movies came from, guys. I made that stupid mistake when I tried out for the Disney uh, writer ship program that was back in the... Uh, must have been back in the 2000s. And I got a very positive response. And I thought, I don't want to work for Disney. I want to do, I want to write horror and stuff like that. And then I initially turned them down. And a friend of mine, hey Sam and Dave, you're going to like this one. Reminded me, Dimension is Disney. I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> all right, where's my slight of thing here while I... Try not to drip on camera. Still getting over that cold, guys. So, this is probably one of, if not the best, of the hammer sets that were, that came out. Sim and Dave, do you have this one? Because I know I got you in the hammer. So there are four films on here. Uh, the number I have, by the way, is 2,653 of 6,000. So let's take off and see the artwork on the inside. And we see the artwork from uh, Taste of Fear. And it is gorgeous. Screen Factor is playing with Hammer movies one at a time. And uh, uh, Indicator are putting them out like sets of four like uh, special editions with like booklets and stuff. You'll, if you've got a Scream Factory hammer, <coughs> they're putting in stuff that uh, Studio Canal is putting out, so it's going to be different stuff that's in the indicator sets. <coughs> so, but there are four films here. There's Revenge of Frankenstein, Taste of Fear, uh, The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, <coughs> and of course uh, the, uh, the Damned, or... Now, what's so important about these films? So we'll go through them one at a time. I'll go through the features, so we'll see the both of the. Uh, it's well, I, it's, I guess it's gonna be a while before seven kids gets to update their stuff. I'm not sure how quickly they're putting their stuff out. So let's start with like the uh, Revenge of Frankenstein. So Revenge of Frankenstein is actually Hammer's first horror sequel. This is the uh, second like. Frank's film in the Frankenstein franchise of Hammer films and it's a really good one this literally picks up where uh, the curse of Frankenstein left off and uh, basically uh, Frankenstein is you know he's in prison he's gonna be going to the gallows type of thing and uh, obviously something happens so feature wise on here this is what you got and I uh, well 
I'll read that out. Oh, Christopher Lee wouldn't be in this one here. He was only in the uh, in the first uh, Frankenstein film. He would be gone to be in all the Dracula films. But he was the monster in the first film. There would usually be a different monster uh, actor playing the monster in each of the films, except for the last two, where it was David Prowse, who also was the uh, kind of the stunt man, the guy in the Vader suit in the uh, Star Wars films. Um, big guy, actually, David Prowse says. Uh, <coughs> Feature-wise on here, we got the original audio mix. It's a new 4K restoration of the film. There's an audio commentary with uh, Marcus Hearns and Jonathan Rigby. Uh, and that's a brand new audio commentary, by the way. There's a second brand new audio commentary with Stephen Jones and Kim Newman, which I know is going to be, like, brilliant. I haven't watched Boy yet. <coughs> Uh, there is a Back from the Dead Inside, The Revenge of Frankenstein, like a feature documentary featurette running at 20 minutes long. Hammer's Women, they do one for each of the movies. This one has Eunice Gason, it's eight minute long, just profile of the actress. A Frankenstein for the 20th Century is a 27 minute video essay with Kat Ellinger and Dima Ballin. Uh, I know Kat Ellinger, I'm not quite sure if I know Dima Ballin as well, so I'm, this is going to be interesting. Um, arpeggio, arpeggios of Melancholy, 30 minutes long, appreciation of... Leonard Salzetto's score. Uh, outtake reel, 12 minutes long. A rare unseen onset footage. There's a Super 8 minute version of the film here. It runs 8 minutes long. Uh, original theatrical trailer. We have the Joe Dante commentary from hell. Trailer commentary from hell. Um, you know, Trailer from hell commentary. Image gallery on here as well. New and improved English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Limited edition exclusive booklet, which we'll see in a second there. A... Uh, Oh, wow. <clears throat> With an essay by Marcus Hearns, Kieran Foster, and Hammer's unreleased Tales of Frankenstein television series. I actually have that episode. Timmy Sankster on the Revenge of Frankenstein, a selection of promotion materials, an overview of the contemporary views from film credit, credits to UK premiere on Blu ray. So, uh, again, it runs like 90 minutes long, so it's got the sweet spot there. So, let's see the, other, the artwork on the inside. So, first off, we'll look at the uh, alternate artwork. And that's it right there. So there's no way you're getting away from like Frankenstein, well, the Frankenstein monster's visage. And if you think you're not getting away from there, you want to know the difference, the real big difference aside from the features on the Screen Factory stuff. These, these are worth the weight in gold. These are the booklets. These are the reasons I tell you, don't wait till the box sets break up and just become one film at a time. Because when you do that, you miss out on the booklet. And uh, the booklets, on these here are are brilliant as you can see by like the uh, you're gonna want to hit read about like the failure of Frankenstein Hammer Columbia and the Tales of Frankenstein TV series there's some fantastic stuff in here and I'm a uh, pretty stoked I actually when I thought I wasn't gonna get this I didn't have the fifth volume pre-ordered because I was kind of bummed about it uh, moments after I got this Screen Factory doesn't <laughs> uh, I pre-ordered the fifth volume <clears throat> I don't think physical media is going anywhere actually I think if anything, the way that it's come, the collectability of it, and the uh, the money that's into into that into the physical media, is going to we're going to see like more of a resurgence in physical media. I'm good with the way it's going because it's becoming more, it may be slightly more niche and more collector uh, oriented. Uh, and it really isn't their thing. I mean, the UK have been always been better with the booklets. Uh, BFI and Eureka, they've always of course done their booklets and they had big booklets there. Um, indicator booklets have always been the highest quality so if you want like get a company you want to start like collecting a company that's got booklets and like with really great stuff for, for reading wise um, indicators really really go through booklets um, I remember people used to get Twilight Time they had these like little tiny like four page booklets uh, welcome William I see media uh, and you think like music that's kind of on, the, on its way back in a way too So this, 
my Getting My Bloody Valentine and April Fool's Day. Two of my favorite movies. So yeah, I don't know if I get them right away though. <clears throat> I got a few things coming on my birthday, so that I've got ordered. So this is the second one here in the set. <laughs> this is kind of the other, uh, I guess, horror, like monster horror one. Because <clears throat> if you remember, like if you're collecting sets like I am, you know that they went for like a horror set and then they went for kind of a suspense thriller type of set. And uh, then they did like an action adventure set. And this is the first kind of like horror set since the first one. Because um, it really have many like like monster horror movies in it. There's no like Frankenstein the original. Yeah, but Best Buy is... Best Buy sucks for, <laughs> for buying stuff. You know what's neat though? There's a... Here in Canada, there's a place called Sunrise Records. You know, if Sunrise Records, if you've never been to Canada, Sunrise Records is a big, they're a big seller of like uh, records and physical media and stuff like that, right? So in 2019, uh, I'm sure you in the UK will remember that uh, that's, that HMV was closing down and FOP and like it was going into receivership. So Sunrise Records came in, swooped in, bought out and saved HMV in the UK and FOP and and, you know, they had to close some down, but they kept HMV and FOP going, and they never changed it to Sunrise Records. I did see all the colors of Jello, and I do recommend it. Uh, now, cut to a year later, FYE looks to be going in receivership. It looks to be not doing the, doing the best. So, again, Sunrise Records from here in Canada swooped in, bought FYE. So, if you live in the States, FYE is now owned by a Canadian company, Sunrise Records. Uh, we buy a lot of physical media here in Canada. Uh, like the crux of it, actually. Uh, that's why places like Sunrise Records actually were able to do so well. And we, how they were able to go and save places in the UK and places in, in the US as well. I'm actually very stoked about that. Canada can come in for a change and, and help out, you know? Did I go to my, no, I actually, I, did, I just got into, like, when I went to, uh, I just got to go to, uh, I got to get the new house by the cemetery. I, that is so high, my list, Emily. I spent my time in Marrakesh. So this is the second one here. This is the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. This was their first like kind of like serious adaption of Dr. Jekyll. I think they did a comedic one uh, previously to this, but this is the first serious one. That's got Paul Massey, Don Adams, Chris Relay, as you can see, you can read there. Um, and again, there is a, uh, a ton of, uh, of features. Well, Jason, here's the thing. Now that, maybe now that Sunrise owns it, it'll, it'll change up a bit. It'll, we'll see. Sunrise is a bit expensive anyway, but I always buy from them. Because I prefer to buy physical media. In a, in a store if I can. I thought Blue Peter was... I didn't know they had DVDs. <laughs> Only Blue Peter stuff I got is on my Doctor Who. Feature-wise on this one here. Uh, we got another uh, high-definition remaster. Original mono audio is on here as well. Got an auto commentary with Josephine Botting and Jonathan Rigby. Uh, it's a brand new one. Identity Crisis Inside the Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, 2019, 19 months long. Uh, Hammers Women, Don Adams. I'm actually interested. In that. I was a really big fan of Don Adams. Uh, 11 minutes. Uh, interview with Paul Massey, done back in 67, runs 10 months long. It's an archival uh, recording. This is an odd one. Now and then, Wolf Mankiewicz. It was a 28 minute one done back in 1968. Uh, you would think he would go, to, he'd go on to talk about uh, his, uh, his movies, but apparently Wolf Mankiewicz was pretty racist, so <laughs> that's what he talked about. Um, I'm not joking. Like You can, you can look this up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mav, Decadence, an 11-minute one on the, uh, on the composer uh, f of, this, uh, of the film. There's Many Faces of Dr. Jekyll, 7-minute overview of censorship history of the Two, two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, which should be interesting. Sam Hamm does the commentary for this trailer. Uh, image gallery. 
new and improved subtitles, and a limited edition booklet with a new essay by Kat Ellinger. So that is going to be uh, uh, fantastic. So let's look at the uh, alternate artwork first. And I actually kind of dig the alternate artwork on this one. More than it did in the last one. So it's very clean and crisp. This is more poster like, but I, I just, there's something about this I like. <laughs> it could be just me. Oh, yeah, I, I can't get into the digital media. I haven't been able to. Like, I'll watch stuff on streaming channels, but I got to own stuff. If I see a movie and I watch it, uh, whether it's on Netflix or Amazon, and I like that movie, I buy that movie. I, I have the, had the Shutter streaming service. I still went out and bought, like, Ruin Me and Bore and movies like that because I, uh, I wanted to promote Shutter making physical media as well as just having a streaming service. So this is... I haven't seen this one in a long time. I remember his his Dr. Hyde, his Mr. Hyde, looking kind of like too, a little silly. Uh, as a, Yeah, because here it is, I think, pretty much right here. Like, you can tell it's him. It's like there's there's no huge, like, fits. Like, he's got a beard. Uh, there's like, mmm, look, <laughs> Dr. Chuckle, Mr. Hyde. A month's feature are always better on Physical Media Rich. I totally agree with you on that. My dad's got all the uh, the the Mo Creek ones. I'm I'm trying to get them an upgrade. I say keep the Mo Creek ones to watch and just have these for the features. Tiger Wharton. No, I haven't seen the movie in ages. That's an odd chase. <laughs> for... This is like Chris Lee in like one of his more uh, straight man roles. He would eventually get to do very few of those, unfortunately. Uh, but. Uh... Hey, here's the, mo the movie with another uh, title, actually. Love this poster, by the way. Kind of wish they'd used it. <clears throat> but, uh, again, uh, anything with written by by Cat Ellinger, I, I am there, man. Like, it is, that is amazing. And number... Number three. Number three. Number one, the larch. The larch. See how many people get that reference. <clears throat> so this is the first of the hammer, black and white, monochrome, whatever you want to call it, thrillers. Uh, it's also considered by far and large to be the best of the Hammer thrillers. Oh, Kubrick, I was there. Welcome, Kubrick Lover. Hey, Brian. And it starts Susan Strasberg, Ronald Lewis, and Ann Todd. Chris Lee's in this one as well. And that is Taste of Fear. Over in uh, North America, it was called Scream of Fear. So if you haven't seen this one, then uh, definitely, definitely worth looking into. Oh, you've seen it, Jason, because I know this was one of the ones on the uh, New Creek ones, right? Feature-wise on this one, uh, get ready for like a ton of stuff. So again, we got two presentations of the film, the Taste of Fear edition with rarely seen original UK title sequences and the Scream of Fear edition with their with the uh, alternate like uh, Scream of Fear US title sequences. You're gonna like those features. Tell me when, when you watch Mood Boobs, I wanna know about that. Uh, so there's two editions of the film here. Uh, side with that, side, alongside with that, where there's a new audio commentary with Kevin Lyons, editor of the Encyclopedia of Fantastic Films and Television. Uh, we have Body Horror Inside Taste of Fear, a 23 minute long documentary on the film. There is a, a, ham, a Hammer's Women Again, one on Ann Todd, which runs 12 minutes long. Uh, this is when we get into some really, really big epic stuff. So, are you ready for this one? Oh, Brian, you came in for the right one. This is a big one. Uh, so, what we have next is the BFI South Bank interview with Jimmy Sankster. Jimmy Sankster was one of their big like director, writer directors. Um, so, it runs six, eight minutes long, and it's an archival audio interview recording of this filmmaker and screenwriter in conversation with Marcus Hearn uh, for BFI South Bank. Now, right after that, there is a video interview 
that was done in 2008 with Jimmy Sankster that runs 170 minutes long. So the, there's a, you know, we're really getting a good look in Jimmy Sankster's like work and thoughts here. Uh, conversation that he did with uh, Jonathan Rigby. Uh, then there's a BHP interview with Douglas Slocum uh, from Hammer to Spielberg. And that's a 82 minute long audio interview uh, with the, about the cinematographer conversation with Sidney Cole, uh, which should be fantastic as well. Uh, Fear Makers is a nine minute one talking with, to the camera operator, Desmond Davis and the sound recorder. Uh, Anxiety and Terror, a 25 minute long appreciation of Clifton Parker's score for the film. A uh, 20 minute long Super 8 version of uh, Scream of Fear here. Uh, there's an original US Scream of Fear theatrical trailer. Sam Hamm does a trailer commentary on this one as well. Uh, with the, there's Image Gallery, and again, we're going to get a booklet. And uh, of course, the uh, we'll look at the other artwork here as well. So this is the artwork. So I wonder if it's going to be Scream of Fear on the next one. I think it will be. Yep. And so this is the Scream of Fear artwork here as well. The beautiful Ann Todd. So booklet wise in here, there's the, and there of course is her in the uh, the wheelchair. Anybody that knows the movie knows exactly you know where that goes. I want to make sure this doesn't like show. Jimmy, Jimmy Sangster and Taste. If you're you're getting like a lot of background information on this movie, especially. Uh, I love the fact that you have like the you know the complete like you know cast and crew credits on every one of these here uh, booklets. Uh, some very very good uh, featurettes, some stunning pictures as uh, as well. Some really nice crisp like black and white pictures. And I like the fact that they do do most of these, not all these, in black and white. Um, it's just a preference of mine, especially when it comes to uh, to to photos and cinematography. There's the picture on the back, of Scream of Fear. So there, that's three of the four. Well, I got one more to go. Then we can talk about what do you guys want to talk about? The Damned. Now, this stars McDonald Carey. Uh, for a lot of people, McDonald Carey is probably best known for his time on Days of Our Lives. Oh, the Ultraman, that's going to be cool. And, uh, but for me, it's like uh, my favorite movie, Shadow of a Doubt, by, by, his, by my favorite Hitchcock film, Shadow of a Doubt. Actually, he was one of the stars of that film. Uh, Joseph Cotton ran, run, and Teresa Wright run away with the film Stranger, Shadow of a Doubt, but McDonald Carey's kind of the romantic lead in that. So he's the lead in this movie here as well, uh, with the Shirley Ann Ford. Actually, uh, feature wise on here, again, we, we got a bunch of stuff to look at. Yep, this is the indicator box set. So we have. Uh, Limited edition, two times Blu-ray special features. Was that on all of them? No, son. Okay, wow. Oh, uh, well, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to talk about here. Uh, so there's 2K restoration, original mono audio. Uh, you ready for this? Because this this is gonna is gonna get fairly epic. Uh, on presentations of the complete 96 minute version. Playable is either The Damned or These Are The Damned. Uh, box set exclusive presentations of the rarely seen original 87 minute UK theatrical cut of The, of the Damned. So uh, th if you don't get, get this in the box set, this will not be in the, in the original, uh, in the release when it comes out on its own. On the brink inside The Damned, 27 minutes long, there's an auto commentary. Wow, with Kat Ellinger and Sam Deegan. I love their auto commentaries. So I know that's going to be like top, just top marks for that one. Hammers Women, women Vivian Linfor runs 50 minutes long, so long, so the Hammers Women one's on here. The Damn, the documentary, 27 minutes long. We got uh, Looking in the Right Places, 10 minutes long, with actress Shirley Ann Fields, where I call working with Oliver Reed and Joseph Lossie. Is this Oliver Reed in this one? If it is. <clears throat> uh, Children of the Dams, 24 minutes long, talking to the former like children actress on, on it. There's something out of nothing, 7 minutes long, talk with the screenwriter. Uh, reflects on his first film, feature film credit, smoke screen interview with the camera operator. Beneath the surface, a 26 minute interview with uh, filmmaker Gavrock Losey, the son of director uh, Joseph Losey. Because there there's like a lot of stuff like behind the scenes of this film. Uh, Beyond Black Leather is a 50 minute academic uh, 
IQ Hunter discusses The Damned. No Future, a 26-minute appreciation by our author and film historian, Neil Sinyard. The Lonely Shores, a 21-minute appreciation of James Bernard's score. Yeah, we've got James Bernard doing the score this one. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, isolated music and effects track on this one because it's a James Bernard score. It would definitely, you want that. Original U.S. theatrical trailer. Joe Dante does the commentary on this, on this trailer here. <clears throat> we got a 36-page booklet. But this is where this one differs from every single other one of the, of the ones you've seen in any of the other sets. <clears throat> I'm sorry if I'm missing some of your comments there. It is Laura Palmer from Twin Peaks, you're right. Good, good eye. This has two discs. This is a two disc set. This is the first of the... And when I say two discs, I mean it's not like a... Like it's not like the same, like one's a Blu-ray, one's a DVD, and they're uh, both they're both Blu-ray. And this disc here, the UK theatrical cut, this is exclusive to the box set. This will not be when they release these movies later on down the road. And like maybe a year or so, and, and he put them on singular, it's just going to have the one disc. Uh, it has the, uh, this is the alternate artwork. It's actually pretty cool. I actually, actually like that artwork. I was unaware until I opened it up just now that, there, that this was a two disc set or that. And if you look on here, one of the neat things, it doesn't matter where you live uh, in the world because these, the rele this release right here, you look at that ABC, and you, that's what you want to see because that ABC, what that means is this, this is region free. So I'm pretty sure every single one of these hammer ones. So if you're still there, Cinema Dave, every single one of these hammer releases that I'm showing to right now, they're region free. So it doesn't matter where you live. You can buy this indicator set and enjoy it and just put it in your player or your PS4 or whatever you put it in. And uh, of course that's Oliver Reed. <clears throat> so you see young Oliver Reed right there on the cover. And again, you got some like fantastic pictures here. The lead. Donald Carey. This is kind of a sci-fi th horror film. Uh, if you've never seen it, I, I do recommend it. It actually is a really good film. That's the alternate artwork that I showed you earlier. Kind of looks, see, it does look as striking. It looks in black and white. I really, really like that. So this is the final <laughs> release, and oh, uh, man. I, oh, no, don't tell me the leaks, because I want to see that movie. I'm actually a really big Godzilla fan. I will. This, yeah, this is the one with the kids. You'll, uh, it's interesting to, uh, to check out. So here you go. This is the four. Like this set that I, I do like a uh, 110% recommend. If you are a Hammer fan at all, in, in any stretch of the imagination, uh, you owe it to yourself to, uh, to grab this set. It'll print light sleeper movies. I'll think about that actually. Oh, Dallas, you'll like this one. It, it is a great set. Uh, and opening it up and just just now finding out about that, like, these are the damned, like, bonus disc, uh, which I hadn't heard or hadn't seen in any of the, in any of the publicity that I read about it. Uh, that's, a, that's a bit of a, like, you know, that, that seals it. Uh, if I did want every other film this movie in the set already, which I did, uh, that definitely seals it. Revenge of Frankenstein is one of the best Frankenstein films out there. 
My favorite is still, um, oh God. Frank Summers Speed of Stride. Oh, I have a few Criterions. I actually got a lot of my Criterions moved over to Morocco, to be honest with you. Hey, welcome, Sinister. Yeah, uh, dude, pick this up. This is Reach and Free. Uh, if you like Oliver Reed, he's a great part in, uh, in These Are the Damned, uh, which I actually forgot that he was in until I actually, because it's been a while since I've seen this movie. But this is the first, like, set since the, since the, the since the first set, actually. This is set four in the Hammers collection that deals with legit, like, straight-on horror. Uh, the first set had, like, The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb and The Gorgon in it, and they had, like, two thrillers to go along with that. Uh, then they went to a complete thriller set, then a complete adventure set, and now they're coming back around again. Uh, I see you got taste, man. Uh, to, uh, to one that has two, like kind of like monster movies. Not, not very much. Uh, uh, just, about, uh, just about maybe like 350 or so movies have been moved over to Morocco. So, so just barely, I've really just ended it. Village of the Damned, uh, well, there was Christopher Reeve, like Children of the Damned, I think. It was a village. Uh, it was a, it was a remake of like an old like 60s film. Because uh, there was two films done, right? There was Children of the Damned and there was Village of the Damned. And John Carpenter remade Village of the Damned in the, uh, in the 80s or 90s, something like that. Oh, of course. Uh, the Angel set was like, for me, it was a huge deal for me. And for anybody that hasn't picked up the Angel set... De Shame on you guys. Pick up that angel's head. It's awesome. Mm. For people that just came in. Um, viewer John actually sent me this. And I don't know if... I don't know if I'm going to be able to use it. Because it's cool. And, and I don't want to hurt it. Or put stuff in it. Or stain it. But uh, this is the uh, I have official Cult of Cinema mug right now. And what's neat about this is John like went out and inspired by the cult cinema name, you know, went through and kind of created this on his own, had this made, and had this sent to me. So uh, that blows my mind. And if you have not been in here since the last time, we now have an official official cult of cinema opener, which is my cult of cinema dagger, which. I use to open up things here in my movie library. I I gotta get to see Parasite. I hear great things about it. Uh, I I finally managed to sit down and watch The Joker. Like, and I, um, I think I did the last time I saw it. Did I talk about that as well? Uh, and I watched a couple other films. That I uh, that I guess are an Oscar contention, uh, and the only thing I can say is I hope that Parasite gets it. Uh, that's I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to say right now. It's okay. Do I have any Mill Creek Entertainment box sets? Oh yeah, I'll show you sometime. I actually got a video of like I got like. I had a, a few Mill Creek box sets, right? And uh, I was there, living in St. John's at the time. And this guy was getting rid of all his physical media. And uh, pretty much he had a collection of Mill Creek sets. And, you know, most of them were even opened up. So uh, he said, you know, I got a bunch of Mill Creek box sets. Come down, pick them up for like 10 bucks, and you can have them all. So I did. Um, he threw in a couple other things at the time, too. And I had everything from like the uh, kind of the indie stuff, like the Tombs of Terror, to the sci-fi, to dark crimes or night terrors, and some of them are, are, still are in their uh, packaging. Oh, a host I've seen. I just haven't seen Parasite yet. <clears throat> I like Toast. Uh, no, I thought Joker was okay. I mean, I didn't think there's nothing wrong with it. I think that uh, people that were worried it was going to like incite like violence or something like that I don't think it that's that's going to do anything like that uh, it's actually fairly uh, it's Todd Phillips 
So I don't want to get into the politics of it, but it's you know it's an anti-gun film. It's an uh, you know anti-rich people film, <laughs> um, and I'm uh, you know I'm down with that. That's okay. Uh, I didn't mind that. I just uh, it's one of those who I felt like I, they did a great job, and but for me, uh, it it didn't resonate with me a lot. Like I I don't know if I felt like I'd seen it or. Uh, and I really respect like like the work that was done on the film and the acting and all that. It just maybe it's just you know, it was it was I think it was overhyped, but that's just me. Like like again, that's just one guy's opinion. Uh, there's a million people out here who give you like critical analysis and go right really deep into it. Uh, I ain't gonna do that. Weekend at Bernie's is a classic. I will go. I will agree with that. I love Weekend at Bernie's. There's a movie coming out now by. Uh, Oh God! With uh, the John Stewart just did called Iris, I think it's, is it Iris this? Uh, and I'm super stoked to see that. That that's up my alley. That's the type of movie that I uh, that I do want to see. Basically, uh, I, I'm going to say like what my what my theory is. I give you my theory. And it's going to be very Gotham-esque in the way that I that I mention this. Uh, when I finish the film, uh, there's no way that I believed that Joaquin Joaquin Phoenix's character of the Joker will ever become the same Joker that sent that plagues Batman <laughs> throughout the uh, films. Uh, I think, and. I don't know if it's if it's meant to be that way or or not. I think he would be the inspiration for whoever actually becomes the Joker in the universe. But I don't take his like honestly. If, if you look at him, no. I mean, you, dude, you know, <laughs> getting get his butt kicked. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. I think he would be the inspiration for whoever would eventually become the Joker. But he would not actually be the Joker that you'd see in the films. That's just my thought on it. I'm a big Batman fan. And Nicholson, yeah, Nicholson rocked. I love Nicholson. But I, I'm, see, I'm, I'm, I'm older. And I went to the theater to watch the 1989 Batman. That being said, uh, my nostalgia glasses come off for a lot of this stuff. Uh, the 1989 Batman is still the best representation for me of the comic book Batman. And I'll, uh, I'll explain. Here's the thing. As good as like the, the Nolan films are, and some of them are actually pretty, pretty good, like really good, uh, they're not good representations of the comic book. Uh, uh, specifically Batman, uh, also Bane, are not well done representations of the comic book. I love Heath Ledger's Joker. Uh, I don't think it's the best representation of Joker in cinema, but I think it's one of the best villains ever in cinema. Uh, so I want to qualify that right now, like put a pin in that. Um, but as for like physically representing what I think the comic at its zenith, at its best, at its zeitgeist, at its very like top level was, uh, nobody did that better than like Tim Burton in, in his two films because he... He got all of it, and I don't even think Tim Burton like read a lot of the comic books, and uh, the reason for that is basically he understood. Like he understood one thing that uh, that Christopher Nolan didn't pick up on, and that is that in order for Batman to work, in order for Batman the character and for the villains and all of the other stuff to work, Gotham has to be realized. Uh, Gotham can't be just any city. It can't be Chicago. It can't be some like film noir type place. Gotham has to be this unique, almost out of time type of place uh, that you look at and you can imagine that these people and these psyches and these creatures uh, of, of the night would be birthed in an area like this. And when you watch the uh, Art Deco-ish kind of like slightly at a time, you're not quite sure what time period it's in, Gotham, that is represented in the first two uh, 
Burton films. Uh, it's it gets it, uh, it it gets it perfect. Um, and Gotham the series actually went a long ways to doing that. Now they didn't have the budget to put to actually get like the like the physical manifestation of Gotham as good as 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 it really should have been because Gotham is this uniquely. Uh, I think a Gotham is almost like it's built in a mad architect's like mind, and and it goes out from there. Um, and his, and it infests the entirety of the city, and that's why the city has this unique aspect to it. Uh, yeah, there's Amy. That's exactly it. Uh, I real I love Nolan. I got all his movies in 4K, uh, but Gotham has no personality in the Nolan films, and that takes away from his version of Batman because you cannot truly have a perfect Batman film without first visualizing and encompassing a perfect Gotham and that is in the uh, the Burton films even the Schumacher films makes an attempt at having a very stylized very uniquely looking Gotham uh, they took that away. That and also, I'll be honest with you, Christian Bale's like probably my least favorite Batman uh, because yeah, the voice was kind of ridiculous and uh, and it did get on, me, get on my nerves. That being said, like, you know, Heath Ledger, Aaron Heckhart, uh, amazing, amazing in the roles that they did in, uh, in those films. And like script-wise, there were some really great script writing within like the first two uh, Batman films. I didn't mind the third one out. It was okay. Uh, it, it was more of a, a throwback to the cheesier, kind of like the fun stuff. Uh, but uh, but for me, the 1989 Batman and the, uh, and the, and the sequel as well, Batman Returns, which uh, was a bit adult actually, uh, are still the, the most perfect representation of, uh, of Batman that's not animated. Without, and again, without the, an, without the 1989 Batman, there would be no animated series, and that is the, the perfect representation of Batman and the Joker and many other characters. Uh, Robert Pattinson, yes. Uh, if you, the only thing you've ever seen Robert Pattinson in is Twilight. Why have you only watched him in Twilight? Um, don't, because don't go judging Robert Pattinson on Twilight if that's the only thing you've seen him in, because that's your fault. <laughs> that's your fault. He's done other movies, uh, and and good ones, stuff like Lighthouse as well. Uh, he's he's a damn good actor. Uh, and uh, he, uh, Andy Circus as uh, as Alfred seems like a perfect choice. I think Andy Circus as Alfred is going to be very much in line of the Gotham like TV series version of Alfred. Uh, as Andy's a much more rough and tumble around the edges Alfred. This is an Alfred that that can fight. Uh, it's an Alfred that's probably helped train Bruce. Uh, Pattinson is a is a solid solid actor. Um, we're, I want we, I want to see the script. Like I don't want I don't want to see the script. I want to see how they're doing it. Uh, Colin Farrell. I can see him be, be Penguin. I just like because more of like the Penguin that not the Penguin that you see like in Gotham or something like that. But if you remember the Arkham games, remember those Arkham games? I can definitely see him as a Penguin in in that line of it as a more like uh, I don't know if maybe you go for more of a Cockney uh, kind of like. You know, guttural street, like kind of like penguin, that type of thing, because uh, that that I can see. How can you hate the Danny DeVito peng Batman penguin? Uh, because he, because literally, it's like say, hey, let's take the penguin and let's take him off the off the comic book page, and make and do. And that's Danny DeVito's penguin. He it he, he's, he's insane and good. Because not only that, you got the best version of Catwoman. Period. Like hands down. Like no, there's there's no debating. Uh, like okay, you know, if, unless you want to go with the ant with the version. You are very alone on that one. <laughs> uh, all right, Ken, welcome. No, no, not this time. And Colin Farrell's done some good stuff, but he's not the star of the film, too, so I always remember that. 
Why do you go with Peter Dinklage as the Penguin? Because he's shorter? <laughs> well, Halle Berry looks great, but the movie is pretty bad. Uh, like, really bad, in my opinion. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh, well, I got it here somewhere. I only think I've upgraded Blu-ray. I think got a DVD. Uh, is, is there a Blu-ray Catwoman? Uh, but uh, not a not a not a good film. Michelle Pfeiffer, like, really, she killed it. Like, she is. She does it. Like, she's Catwoman. And the farther they got away from making the Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman movie, uh, I didn't see Dumbo. I actually wasn't interested in it, to be honest with you. I like the original Dumbo, the cartoon Dumbo. I'm not against, or I don't have any like thing, like against uh, against, against remakes. Uh, oh, Peter Dinklage is more. He's a fantastic actor. Uh, but uh, it just didn't didn't like wasn't something. That I, uh, Peter, Mark Hamill can't do it because he's just too insane. In, it, it's too ingrained. It, for Batman, it's still too ingrained. Like, he opens his mouth, you know, the Joker. Like, no matter what, how he changes it, or because he's a good voice actor and stuff like that as well. But as soon as he opens it, like, people are going to see Mark Hamill and they're going to think the Joker. So uh, he's, he's, he's stuck there. And if you're like a 90s Flash fan, you're going to think the Trickster as well. Don the Dead, Back to the Future. I, I don't want that on you, on you, on you, on you, I don't think. I think he would have been a good version of a live action Joker. I'm not quite sure. Mark Hamill's a little bit older now. Uh, if we're going to do like an older Joker. I, just, I don't want to see like a live action Dark Knight Returns. I was never a fan of Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. I'm not a big Frank Miller fan, I'll be honest with you guys. When it comes to like the, uh, the comic book stuff, I like, like some of his Sin City stuff. But Frank Miller went cuckoo for Coca Puffs crazy. Uh, and uh, I'm not even joking, he, he really did. Um, and his later stuff is pretty horrible. To watch any animated, I, I do, I own the animated Batman series over there, uh, right next to my 60s Batman series, which I absolutely like adore. And of course, I got Batman Beyond as well, which is what I, the one I wish they would eventually make a live action version of. I think we could get uh, Michael Keaton back as Batman, and we could do a live action version of that. I haven't seen the no, actually, I'm a big Dinklage fan, so I would watch the movie that I think we're alone now. Is, is that the name of it? When I see the name I think we're alone now, what I think of is that Tiffany documentary, or like those stocks of Tiffany documentary, which kind of freaked me out when I watched it. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. Oh, Back to the Future is something I don't want to see him touch. Like, as in, like, making a new one. I would definitely check that out. Cool blue. Sick. Yeah, that's a ton of... That's impressive. Did they say the animated ones? I was a big Tiffany fan growing up. I still am, actually. She redid her, I think, We're Alone Now video, actually, uh, last year. And she's the same age as me. Me and Tiffany are both 40. In our 40s. You know my age now if you just go to like Google Tiffany's age. Stance on a wedding. I haven't seen that movie in ages. Uh, dude, I'll be going to that one like brand new now. But Ken, if you don't have this, freaking get this, man. I'm not, I'm not joking. Blue Rain 4K, that's a lot. I'm so excited opening up The Damned and seeing like that it was a two disc set. As far as I know, this is the first, and you guys get like, I don't have, the, uh, there's a couple like indicator box sets I'm missing, uh, but I think this is the first one that had actually an exclusive disc in the set. Would I be correct on that? Car Space came out today? Like on Blu-ray? Like here in North America, you see Tuesday. Scream, I like Scream Fear. Scream Fear is, is a fantastic film. But Revenge Frankenstein, 
amazing sequel. Dude, you sold off The Damned? Dude, Ken, did you watch The Damned? It is a great movie. Like, I really like that movie. The Two Faces of Dr. Jack's probably the least in there, and I still think it's a fun film. Leslie Nielsen. In his comedy days or his serious days? Spy hard. <laughs> Dude, you have to give that one another chance. The damn is amazing again. Because Oliver Reed. There's, that's all you need to know. Like, Any movie that has Oliver Reed in it, and if anybody says, I don't like that movie, and I say Oliver Reed, it negates any arguments at all that we're going to go with that. But, in all seriousness, uh, Spy Heard. I, I think I actually do. Uh, do I don't. Second viewings, yeah. For me, sometimes it takes a few viewings to, to get into, uh, into certain films. I remember, speaking of Oliver Reed, here's a movie that took me a while to get into. Anybody remember, like, uh, Tommy? It's like this rock opera that Who did back in the day. Hey, Joseph, welcome, man. Uh, it took me a while to really get that. I wish I had Electric Dreams on Blu-ray. That's a fantastic film. Love is Love. Great song, by the way. If you've never heard the song Love is Love by, uh, by George, definitely check it out. You didn't like Curse the Werewolf? Oh, man. Ken. Ken, man. Gotta give it a ch Gotta watch it again. Hey, Cat Lover, welcome, man. Yeah, Tommy was different. I mean, it took a while to, for me to get into Tommy. Maybe I needed mind-altering substance to get into Tommy, but uh, like, uh, in all honesty, I love the music. Uh, but it did take, take me a few watches before I really got into that one. You said Tommy when it was first released? Are you older than me, Joseph? Most people on here are usually like, kind of a little bit younger than me. And by a little bit sometimes, I mean a lot. <laughs> I don't have a like, Electric Dream soundtrack on CD. I used to actually used to have a. I was about to use my Call to Cinema one as like as my cup. I was just about to drink out of it. I agree. Quadrophenia is one of the best albums, actually. Peace and the Magic Tour is excellent. I hope you like it. My dad loved it. He said it was one of the best, and the features are on it are incredible as well. I was talking to my dad last night, actually. So guys, four to six months is the projected time for moving to Morocco. So at that point, you'll be seeing me in a different location. And uh, with, in a different country, but I'll still be doing these videos. Much faster than we thought, it does. My better half is looking at, looking at some uh, job opportunities there. I will be teaching. I am going to be in semi-retirement, but I'm going to be teaching some classes and like at a boarding school and at kind of like a fine arts university. So I'll be teaching some film. So kind of like on here, but I'll be showing movies and stuff, and they'll be talking about them afterwards. There were days of horror, live horror. I'll try to do the live horror again next year as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> like for me right now, uh, I'm learning French, slowly but surely. Uh, yeah, well, it's not too cold here because I'm in the Atlantic provinces. Uh, now, if I lived in Ontario or Alberta, like it's super cold in those areas, uh, like they get like warm in the summer, but like super hot. Oh, not only Joseph did he have like really nice movie theaters in Morocco, uh, they have an amazing, Film festival there every year, Marrakesh. Uh, actually, this is the only new one I got in a while. Sorry, Will. <laughs> uh, and they have a film festival there, and it's uh, what was it again? It's run by, I think, on the board, 
is who was that? Yeah, Scorsese. Scorsese is on the on the board of the uh, Marrakesh Film Festival. So people like Scorsese, and um, a lot of big directors like that come uh, every year, and a lot of films get like premiered there. Uh, and it's been getting bigger like throughout the years. I'm sure probably when Mark Scorsese was doing his like uh, you know world cinema thing, probably a lot of them premiered around there at the time before they went into like you know to Criterion or you know Eureka. Uh, so there's there's a lot of uh, yeah there's a lot of film festivals there. I, I'm actually moving to Marrakesh, which is a bit city. Uh, uh, two years ago, her uh, uncle bought us a uh, a condo for uh, for Christmas, and uh, so this year was my first time go seeing it. And I uh, and I'm fell in love with it right away. We live right in the middle of downtown, so basically we walk down the road. Uh, there's like a, there's a toy store really close by. There's like a, a restaurant. Uh, it's a really great pub that, w that we go to. And uh, you know the only thing, and I mentioned it on here for the, so people that weren't here for my last video, um, the one thing you can't buy in Marrakesh, you know what that is? Blu-ray players. Uh, Blu-ray players aren't, aren't big. They're, they do a lot of like streaming and they have like uh, they have DVD players, but they don't have Blu-ray players. So I, a lot of my but a lot of my physical media stuff, like well, the stuff I'm taking with me, but a lot of the stuff I'm probably going to be buying in London. So uh, I am planning a couple trips to London. Within, well, hopefully one this year and probably a couple next year, and uh, of course two trips per year to uh, to Canada as well, uh, with uh, extended periods of time. Uh, I haven't seen Parasite yet, but from what I've seen, I'm going for Parasite. I thought about going for the 220 electronics, like getting a really good one, uh, just before we move, because I want to have some something that like takes care of it all, like Blu-ray, 3D, 4K, if possible. Uh, I don't really need anything for 4K. Th that's region free anyway. What the hell am I thinking? Okay, just Blu-ray, 3D, that type of thing. So I can watch it on either way. Good thing is the. Uh, you know, if I put like a, you know, just a, a thing on my, uh, like an adapter, a lot of things can be used because the voltage is like dual voltage. Uh, well, no, but I sell my TVs here, uh, and uh, then I'll be getting a new TV there. I'm probably going to go for, I won't go for anything too big, because you're probably starting 65 inches uh, for, uh, for there. Uh, we have uh, our living room planned out. That's where my videos will be shot from because it's going to be, let me see, I'm going to miss your guys' comments here, but let me show you something. I'm going to see if I can find a couple of the pictures that I, that I got from, uh, from Morocco to give you an idea. Understand, super messy. Just, just putting that out there right away. So... Do I have them on here? Probably with the, with the kids' pictures, so let me go there. You ready for this? <laughs> they do actually noise and lights. That's not a, you're not lying there, man. Uh, do you mean the burns and stuff like that? Yeah. <laughs> Ignore that stuff. <laughs> but yeah, they do. That's, that's not a, that's, that's, that is, he is not telling anything that is not true. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna lose viewers while I do this. But the viewers that stay will see some cool stuff. So there. Paprika Pringles. By the way, they're really good. So we have workers in right now. So things are like super all over the place. We're gonna be able to find it. You know, I'm probably not gonna find these pictures now. You can find pictures of like bimbo bread. I'm not not joking. There's a bread in Morocco called bimbo bread. 
I, I, I had to take a picture of this because because that is my be my my youngest uh, he would know about like when it comes to that type of stuff. Oh, the rims are also messy in the pictures. Okay, this is my friend. So this is my kitchen area right there. We actually had to like break some of the marble in the kitchen to uh, to work on some of the. Uh... I mean, so out from the kitchen, there's like an outside area, and it's got like our kind of railing stuff on there. Been more <laughs> coming blonde. I don't think so. So okay. This is hard to tell. So there's this. So this is kind of like the living room area. Now this here, right in the back, goes all the way up. It's like a huge, huge, like uh, wall. And the reason for that is so we spoke to the workers that were working on the uh, on the outside railings and stuff like that <laughs> when we were there, and we're getting them to do a, a ladder for us. So. Um, our plan is to well, we're going to have the you know 65 inch TV with the you know the Blu-ray players you know gaming systems like down beneath, and uh, all around it is that's where the movies are going to be. So there's enough space there to take everything that I got in here and in the other room, and uh, and put them up there. And uh, we're getting them to make a rolling ladder, so. That like it's it's that high. Yeah, no, it's not like I can reach up. No, it would be like reaching up to the ceiling in the in the other uh, floor of this of this house. Um, I would need a ladder, kind of like a rolling ladder, so I can actually reach movies at the uh, top. But you guys will get to see all that when I go to Morocco, and that all gets done. So we have workers that are doing that for us, actually. Exactly, very much like an old-fashioned library. So if you ever seen like those movies where you see these you know, gigantic libraries. And you have this big rolling ladder that goes across. Am I going to start a cult the cinema shop? I never even really thought of it. Uh, somebody sent me this, but something like that. Uh, I eventually, uh, I don't know. Uh, if I thought of a cool idea, I uh, I would. Because I'll be honest, my uh, my Patreon didn't take off very well. But I still have some some loyal Patreon supporters. Thank you, by the way, so much. Cat lover, Francis, thank you so much. Kind of like, well, well, hopefully without the tarantulas, but kind of like in the beyond. We'll go with the mummy. We'll go with that one. We'll go with the version of the mummy. Because I don't want to think about the beyond, because that one, that one does not end so well for, uh, for that librarian guy there. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, if you're... Thinking of a huge library that goes up and up and up and that has like a, a rolling metal ladder, that's uh, what we're, we're doing. Actually, the, uh, the people, because we have, we have an outside area, <laughs> uh, and it's like, it's good, but the thing is that it comes up to like, you know, sir, high, but not high enough where... Uh, where you know, like somebody couldn't jump over and kind of Jimmy the Lock type of thing. So even though I, we're, I still feel it's a fairly safe area, what we did is we had like uh, kind of uh, panels and stuff installed uh, on the on the top, like metal grating. So that you still get the sun, but it's uh, you know, but it's like encased. Also, we have cats as well, right? So on the outside, we got we got that there, and the people that did the uh, the grating. Are the people that are doing the uh, the ladder? Are there any Amazons in Africa? I don't know. I mean, like, uh, the thing is, uh, I also worry about like getting certain things and like wonder, like, so, like say you get certain things in the UK and we have like certain censorship laws and this is going to be caught or uncut that type of thing. So I think it's just a bit safer for me to like and easier for me because I will be traveling uh, to like just to buy my stuff when I'm in Canada or to buy my stuff when I'm in uh, when I'm in London. I was already been invited by uh, Hin's, uh, Hin's cousin to go to a, you know, to have kind of like a guys weekend in London. And I want to have uh, my dad, like uh, 
trip with my dad to London too. He, uh, he's actually looking into his uh, in, looked into his uh, what do you call it? Is uh, to, to getting a passport for the first time, which is kind of cool. So that will that'll be excellent. My dad's never been to London, but he's like a huge fan. Like he grew up with like Hammer films. I, like I literally grew up with Hammer films. Uh, you know, he's seen them on theater. <laughs> like saber knives. That I don't know. That could be a bit sketchy. If I started sending knives through the mail. Hey, Indy fan, and welcome, man. Hey, happy Chinese New Year. Are you still in China now? Or did you have gone back home for vacation? Home looking at your films. Your massive amount of films that probably came in over the last few months since you last been home. And Indy, if you don't have it, I'm just going to say it right now. Get this. Get this. Get this now. It's region free. <coughs> it's for the best that Hammer did. It's for the best to put it in the set, that's for sure. And The Damned is a double Blu-ray disc set. So we're both going to be in the teaching. We'll be in the teaching at the end of this point, won't we? I don't know what to do. What would... What type of merchandise would I sell? And we'll get it at the right price that I can sell it for cheap. That's the type of thing, too. If I was to do any type of merchandise down the road, or way down the road, what type of thing would you like to see? Like, what type of thing would you want? Congratulations, man. Is it called Alberta High School? I love that. Man. <laughs> I love that it's called Alberta High School. I'm a huge wrestling fan. I, I more so AEW right now than the other stuff, but it's Russ, it's Raw Rumble weekend. I'm excited about that. Even though Raw Rumble is probably gonna suck ass, but I'm still excited about it. I love Blackman Rising, but I haven't seen it in years. Yeah, it's uh, this Sunday, actually. I'm thinking of doing the same thing, just for the month, though, because I'm not really into Russ, like, them watching the... It's an Alberta credit school. Wow. In India, I'll be teaching film. <laughs> but unlike you, not full-time. I'm not... I won't be going full time uh, for for a while, actually. Isn't it freaky when you go to like a different country and realize that the places that you think are like huge, like lobby cars? That's a that's a different one. That's interesting because I haven't heard people that do that. So you know that that's a real serious thought. It would probably be by the when I got to Morocco by the time I started doing something like that. Because then I could look at different places and companies that I could probably do that with. I could probably put a bit of a Moroccan cult the cinema flair on there as well. So it'd be interesting. That was maybe lead me to talk some oh somebody asked if my kids speak French. Uh, uh my kid no, they don't. Uh one speaks uh, a lot of Korean. And uh, the other one speaks uh, a lot of uh, Japanese. Slap bracelets. Oh, that's actually a cool idea, man. Apparently, PlayStation has a digital sale on right now. Can't afford it, but if anybody's got PlayStation 4, go for it. A musical theater. That's, that's got to be nice. Are you doing a play? Or do you have a play that you're doing, like a musical theater? Might I recommend Heather's? 
I'm actually a big fan of that, that musical, by the way. I'm not joking. Hey, Ghostbusters, welcome, dude. Will that go over in China? It's different, I guess, different type of... You know, that's the thing. You, you're you going to get... I will probably be indie. I'll probably be, like, hitting on your, your knowledge because I'm also going to be teaching in a different country, which is a different culture. When I started, like... That's kind of cool, actually. Do you know I know all of High School Musical? Because, you know, there's the Greece connection and... I definitely will. I mean, like, I know that her uh, parents have a place in the Canary Islands. Uh, her sister lives in Paris. She's an architect. And uh, I think there's, like, a little, like, kind of, like, family home there. Yeah, well, Greece does have some stuff in it that you do have to tone down. People don't realize that when they watch the, the film. Do I like me? I love musicals. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a theater. I'm a theater kid. And uh, obviously, you know, it's going to be an actor. Uh, I can't sing to save my life, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> Carlito, thank you so much for coming in and for staying so long, dude. Have a good evening. So, I, uh, I, I grew up with, like, musicals. And, uh, you know, what's my favorite? I mean, uh, no, and I like the weird musicals, too. He's a family-friendly version, yeah. Kind of like, it, it's cool. I mean, like, uh, we did, I remember doing Grease a couple times, uh, which was, was harder because I can't sing very well. Uh, but, like, in school. Oh, Need Gore does great stuff. Uh, check out Need Gore stuff, by the way, if you haven't already. Because uh, I'll always promote that guy. Uh, Corey got some cool stuff. I, however, am the opposite of that when it comes to that singing. Are they doing a sixth one for real? I thought they were rebooting it. But, uh, but yeah, no, I love... I did parts of Penzance. I remember doing that uh, when I was younger. Oh, I, de I, I definitely will. Even just like to talk about it, like because it is, you know, I'm going to be teaching a different language. Uh, I'm doing like with some younger students as well as like obviously some university like level students. So uh, when I when I started that, the first thing that I thought was okay I've got to do something that's that's going to translate over and uh, when you got younger students they don't you know some of them they're learning English uh, but they don't know like like a lot of it uh, and for uh, for me the first thing that I wanted to uh, to, to say okay well let's do let's do like comedy comedy translates over and let's do silent comedy so for like the younger students, we're starting with some silent comedy with some like uh, with some Buster Keaton and some Charlie Chaplin, um, and kind of doing some uh, some stuff like that. Kind of a way, kind of a way in. And uh, that's what I'm hoping for. Like when I get like you know just just put in the whole world of it all. Like I'm learning stuff as it is, but I'm learning it slowly and Duolingo and that. Good luck on your date, dude. You're bad man. I won't say old Batman, we're never old. We're never, you're only as old as you feel, man. I would love to go to, I want to go to Japan. I see like all the big like gamers, YouTubers going to Japan. And uh, I want to go there and play Pokemon Go and just go to some of those gaming stores because I'm a huge Huge fan of some of the stuff. I'm a big Nintendo guy. But I'm, I'm rambling now, sorry. So which means I'll probably soon be ending this video. Jungle Cruise. I don't know that one, actually. People keep telling me about that one.
Take a crazy taxi live action movie. That'd be different. <laughs> Didn't you already make it called Taxi? Well, no, it's... Oh, do you not make a lot of money? You're preaching to the choir there, man. I went for making some some fairly decent. Like my, I'm definitely not in the in the you know, poor category, but still, my job is like it's a basic. It, it's it's great. People are are great where I work, so I'm lucky that way. And I, I get to go to Morocco and go and teach and stuff like that in like a few months of Chala. So uh, you know, I, I no complaints. Uh, definitely, I feel very blessed. If anything. Wildlife Farm Safari. <laughs> That's a South Africa. Uh, I, I mix that up too, by the way. Uh, you're welcome to come, Brian, sometime. Come visit. Uh, if you want to see, like, the wildlife, like, the lions and tigers and bears, oh my, uh, then you want to go to South Africa. That's the other side. Uh, North Africa is pretty much like uh, camels. You see lots of camels there and sheep. Uh, that's where Aragon Oil, the Moroccan Oil, remember, you know, see that in, like, stores and stuff? That's where you get that from in uh, North Africa, uh, but no, not a lot of uh, not a lot of like uh, kind of wildlife that you that I can actually tell you about camels and sheep basically uh, type thing. You know, it's a desert area. There's not like it's not like a not a jungle area. South Africa is a jungle area. When you think of like that, you're thinking of like the Tarzan movies and stuff like that. You're thinking of like more South Africa. I've never been over there actually. Yes, of course. Uh, yes, I've been to Casablanca. My better half was born in Casablanca, actually. Uh, her uh, sister right now lives there, and uh, she's a uh, she makes cakes. That's different. I mean, like I went. I, I didn't spend much time there. Only went there for the day. No, but obviously, when I go there, I'll be able to just take the train over. Uh, but uh, I went to the mall, the Casablanca Mall. It's huge, man. Uh, like I, I'm not joking. Like just look it up. Sometimes freaking huge. Uh, arcade. I'll look at Alabama. The the arcade retro champ. More accessible. Yeah, probably more accessible. Uh, I, I think I'll stay away from more from the jungle area, though. If I'm going to travel, it's going to be like, you know, go to like Paris or London or Canada, <laughs> somewhere like that. Or eventually, uh, one of his good, good friends actually, um, he only speaks French. Uh, so we don't really get to talk as much as uh, as, as I would like. And, uh, you know, he was there, we we're there like kind of talking. And uh, he said, you know, I'm sorry, like he said it in like, and translated said, I'm sorry, I only speak French. And I'm like, no, dude, I only speak English. So it's, you know, it's kind of on both sides. But he is like, he goes to uh, to New York actually a bit. Oh, no, I've been to to the U.S., but not like a lot of places in the U.S. I've been like to Maine and places like that. You know, places close to like when you live in Ontario that are easy to go to. But I haven't been in any of the big places like New York or California, anything like that. When do I leave for Morocco? Uh, within four to six months, actually. Uh, we're not quite sure yet. Um, it's all going to depend on a couple of, on a, on a couple of things. Once we, uh, once Hind ensures, well, like there's a couple of different jobs that she's looking into. Once we know which one that she wants to go for, for sure, then the next step is to, uh, start the, uh, the packing. And, uh, that's going to take a couple of months and getting things situated over there. I'm going to do my travels through, uh, through uh throughout like Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. I like to see the kids. The kids are coming visit me. My uh my youngest is coming in February. My uh my oldest is coming in March. I do, I, I do. I, I do want to visit the US actually. I was gonna visit uh I don't want to get into it too much, but I was gonna visit in, in twenty sixteen. It didn't happen. I'm hoping down the road. Uh so hopefully soon. I love, I would love to go to New York. Uh, one of his friends is a uh, a burlesque dancer. Uh, she's really really good actually. She trains other burlesque dancers, and uh, she uh, she lives in New York. She travels a lot, like goes around to different parts of the world. 
She's got like a really ghost on her Instagram stuff. Really cool stuff. Uh, Marrakesh Express. Uh, it, it's it's fun. I mean, like you take the you go to Marrakesh, and you take the train to Casablanca. Uh, Casablanca. Like I mentioned it on here before, but Marrakesh is a big urban like city. Uh, it's not like kind of like, but kind of. There's like the Medina area, which is kind of the tourist area, but it's like more you know. There's nightclubs and bars and food, but lots of food places, really good food places. I miss the food over there. Uh, I guess uh, here, let me give you a good example. I guess so let me show you the Medina. Where I went and got my uh, saber from, by the way. <laughs> I've been told to stay away from Trump Tower. By the time I go over there, probably its name changed. <laughs> oh, I can't find this right now. This is killing me. But we have like the the farm over there too that are uh, that's where we want to do the uh, eventually do the bed and breakfast at, and uh, it's like the neat thing is you go there and there's like the orange like this orange here for instance like just a picture of an orange by the way but I actually picked that off the of the uh, tree myself and there's it's I know it sounds silly but there's like a there's something about that. Yeah, they did open up a real Rick's Cafe. I'm not sure what it's like, though, because uh, I thought about it, actually. I thought, you know, if there's not a Rick's Cafe in Casablanca, this is something to think about. But apparently somebody did it. So here is uh, me at the Medina. I'm not sure if you can see this picture. Ignore my fantastic posture. I was tired. <laughs> I was walking with tendonitis. That's correct, actually. I eventually want to open up our own B&B there, and we have, like, the area for it. Uh, we just have to uh, do some. I want to get some workers and do some renovations, uh, upgrade the Wi-Fi in that area, and uh, think of it a pool, maybe. Um, not quite sure, maybe. Moroccan cuisine is it's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it's fresh food. Like, uh, you when you go in to get stuff, it is, like... Uh, I, you don't get a lot of like uh, I, there's not a lot of, of processed food, but you know you don't eat a lot of that. Tagines are are amazing. Uh, <laughs> the uh, but uh, like there's you know I'm not a big meat eater, so like the lamb and stuff like that, which a lot of people love, uh, it's not you know it's not 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 for me. Uh, but uh, they have like vegetarian tagines there, and. Uh, Tagine is like uh, it's a it, it's like a kind of a clay kind of uh, like dish, and you uh, can make all kinds of stuff like couscous. And I feel I've lamb, dude, man. Uh, that's the place for you, because uh, they have a lot of that there. And like there's like there's areas like surf areas like in Essaouira, where uh, basically you go and uh, you know you sit you sit by the beach in one of the restaurants, and when you pick your you know, like the fish that you want, and you, you say how you want it made. Like this is literally fish that's like just been taken out of the ocean, so it's extremely fresh, which which is fantastic. They have some great like uh, chefs in there. I'm missing your comments here too. Your dream trip is Tokyo. Nice. Rome Williams movie ties. I don't know actually, so I'm gonna go with Dungeon on that one. Uh, so I'm, he's the he's more the expert on that. You have the Indian cuisine, so you, yeah, you like the Moroccan cuisine. It's uh, everything's so fresh. That's the first thing I notice because I'm here. I live in North America. Okay, uh, there's like there's like Wendy's and and all this stuff and like McDonald's and places and Tim Hortons around. So I like to get up and like we go in the morning and we get like you just get a croissant or uh, just just a pastry. 
and you know it's been like it's been like freshly made or we'll go there there's actually a a guy just came there with a churro stand uh, just recently and uh churro's more of a mexican cuisine and uh, he's he like just recently came there too we were, i think we we're one of the first people that went there yeah that's the thing amy that it does take a serious effort to eat healthy in north america and i'm getting a bit of a belly on me and i don't want that especially where i haven't been able to work out as well with the tendonitis You know, I actually do think I have the movie called Duma. I don't think I watched it, but I think I got it. And I don't know why I got it, but, but is it a good movie? Uh, but yeah, the, the think of the food, it's like really fresh. Uh, there's also some great, like, they have different like types of potato chips there. Uh, not as big as bags as you would get over here in North America. We eat way too much junk food and uh, too big much... Uh, too much like in, in the big portions um you know a lot of people like that's what they say when about like us north americans like we eat too much oh fresh fruit is amazing i love that the neat thing is like her mother like has a uh like on the farm they they have like uh they do olive oil so and i mean like they like they produce olive oil there Yeah, I think Richard Pryor was in a movie called The Toy, which back in the early 80s, I think. I would say early 80s. Could be wrong in that one, but it's early 80s. Toys is a different movie. That's a very different type film. And that is Rob, Rob Williams. That's where he's a bowler hat type thing. <laughs> it does, actually. It's a different film. Anyway, at 91 minutes, longer than the Hammer films that I just showed you guys. And so I don't ramble on too much. Because I bored away at least eight or nine people here anyway. So I do apologize. I'm Aaron. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> so you came in right at the end. <laughs> Superman returns. I will catch you next time, though. I hope. So. I hope so. Uh, in the cult of cinema, that's you guys, and you guys rock. I want to thank John again for this amazing mug, which is super, super awesome. It is definitely time for tea. And if you didn't get here to see it, this is Volume Four of Hammer called Faces of Fear. It is region free and it has like Superman your return. It has a uh, a double disc the damned on here with a UK theatrical version of the film that's exclusive to the set. So check it out. Thank you for joining me for my very first unboxing of 2020. Have a great evening. I'm Aaron. You guys are the call of cinema. You guys rock. And until next time when we're hopefully unboxing something else. I'll see you soon.